We're making a water feature that one can hang on a trellis or even attach to a wall. So you know that we're going to be making a water feature. The trick is how we're going to be making it. And there are so many products available these days that you can use to create your own masterpieces with. You can mix and match, do a bit of a paint technique, and today we're going to show you just one of those. Now, Garth, we went sent you shopping. You came back with this baby. Yes, Tanya. Uh, what is the proper name for this? Because I call it a ceiling. How's your father? It's a, it's a ceiling, um, take off a ceiling. Okay. Just to... Fancy your ceiling up. Okay, so this is for fancy ceilings. However, we're going to make a fancy water feature out of this guy today. So, the things we need are as follows. One of these fancy gadgets. Remember, they come in many different sizes. You can get one yo big, you can get one even that small. We've gone for an intermediate size. We've also got a few little three inch nails. Um, we've got a piece of masonite which is quite flexible, okay? And it's important that you're using masonite for this because we want it to have that flexibility. And then lastly, a little piece of copper tubing. Right. Most importantly, make sure that your surface is nice and level and wherever you're going to be working that you can leave this. Right, first up, Garth. Okay, tell you all we have to do, put it in the place where you want it. Okay, let's put them in the middle here. Okay, we put them in the middle. Nice in the middle there. Alright. Righty ho. And then we just take this mason out to right around. That's it. Make it nice and tight. Okay. And if you can just hold that there like that for me. Okay, I want to tell the folks something. Okay. If you're working with this, and your masonite snaps. All you're gonna do is pass this to me for a sec, I'll take this and just dunk it in some water. So dunk a bit, dunk a bit, dunk a bit and leave it for a couple of minutes. As the moisture gets into it, you can then bend it more. So let's get back to this goth. Right, there we go. I'm gonna hold this guy. Okay. And then you're gonna bring those nails into action. I'll just knock a couple around here. And all this is doing, the little three inch nails, is just holding this piece of masonite in place. And it's important that you try and get this as snug as possible to, the, to your mold over here. So if it moves, stop and fix it up again. I suggest whoever you use that is going to be helping with this, that you trust them because right now, my thumb is right next to the hammer. You don't have to worry. <laughs> oh, I'm behind the hammer. <laughs> right, we're good to go. Yep. So we've got our polystyrene mold, which is now on the inside. We've used the masonite around the edge. The three inch nails are holding it in place. We are now good to go. Let's go and get our mixture ready so we can get this baby sorted. Right folks, because this is a very small amount of concrete mixture that we're going to be needing, we're literally going to be mixing it in this bucket, makes life much simpler. What we're going to be using is a little bit of stone, and um, this is building stone, which is the 12 millimeter, nice and small. So it's one scoop of your builder stone, we're going to throw that into the bucket. All right, and we've got four scoops of fine river sand. All right, and then Finally, two scoops of PPC cement. Lovely stuff. Now, if you were wanting to make a whole lot of them, then obviously you would just increase your ratios. Mix it all in well. Let's get that going. And now we add a little bit of water. Oh. Right, Garth, this yep. is looking great. Yep. Not too runny. You can see it's still standing and holding on my trowel. However, if I do that, off it goes. Great, Garth. Let's take that baby up to our mold. Alrighty, Garth. We're good to go. But before we do that, you've got that can of awful stuff, and I'm going to step away. This is a releasing agent. It comes in a can you can get at your local hardware store. If you don't want to get that, or you can't get your hands on it, you could just use some cooking oil. Um, anything like that will work as a releasing agent. Ah, magic. A piece of copper pipe, the most important thing is to make sure that your copper pipe, to be safe, is at least 15 centimeters long. What we're needing now is a drill, and in the center of this, we're just going to make a mark. Here we go, center of that. And then Garth is just going to drill right through the mold. Beautiful. Okay, let's just clean it up here. Then we take our copper pipe and we insert it through the hole and push it down 
until you hit the surface that you're working on. That's it. Now all we do is start adding our concrete mixture in. Right, nice and smoothed off and good to go. The important thing is that this is the reverse. This is the back end of your feature. So you don't need to be too worried about how neat it is. Nobody's ever going to see this because it's going to be attached to the wall. So don't stress about your finishing. Now all we do is leave it to dry for two days, but we've made one already that's dried and ready to be revealed. So let's get this one out the way and show you the one we made earlier. This is the one that's been made two days ago. Exactly the same. All that you can see now is that the concrete is a different color and that's a sure way of working out if it's okay and safe to take apart. Take off the nails. There we go. But we're holding your masonite together. Okay, and watch now. Because we use the releasing agent, watch how easy this masonite just comes off. Ha ha! Beautiful. Now, for the most important part, Garth, how are we going to do this? You're going to pick up that end. Okay. I'm going to pick up here and we're going to flip it towards us. Okay. Two, here three. we go. Two, three, up. Right. This was the back of the mold. Remember, we had it on the surface where we were working. All you've got to do is just take one of those nails and close to the edge here, where it just joins, just run the nail along here, just to loosen it a little bit. Right, Garth, let's give this baby a bash. Grab it there, pull your mould away, making sure that someone is holding the big end. Right. Awesomeness. That's what I like. Look at that, Garth. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Nice. Let's turn this baby, lie him down just like that. Oh, magnificent. I'm delighted, absolutely delighted. And you know what? It's going to look even better when we've got some lovely water flowing through this and when we've given it a bit of a paint because that's what I want to do to it. But what, what a beautiful finish. Before we get to assembling our water feature, the final thing that I want to do to this guy is give it a final technique. So. This is how you do it. You want to get a piece of cardboard. I find it generally works the easiest. You want something that you can work in and that's easy to handle. And just a nice broad paintbrush. Take a bit of ordinary PVA, white PVA, and put a bit literally as if you're painting the cardboard. When you're applying it, this is not like painting. You want a very gentle action because you literally just want to touch the white on the positive. This is how we do it. You're just going to run it across like that. And you see, because we're doing it quite gently, very soft wrist action, you're not getting it into the negative at all. You're just hitting onto the, the higher surfaces. And it's as simple as that. All right, folks, the first part to assembling our water feature is this amazing trough, which of course has the plastic tubing in, which has been sealed. Garth, we're just going to position it here. We're going to feed the tubing right through and then feed it through and just let it just rest over here. All righty, now to attach our masterpiece. Garth, <laughs> here's our piece of copper. Pop it onto that. Right, can you see it fitting nice and snug? All right, Garth, you're going to lift it up and I'm going to pull it back. Awesomeness! Now, the fact is that we haven't filled it up with water yet, our trough. So many people ask me, I need a tap close by when I'm having a water feature. No, you don't, because all that's going to happen is we're going to attach the pump now and the water is simply going to circulate. So let's get that pump in, hook them up and let's get going. The pump has been drilled through the cord, through our trough and attached to an outdoor electrical point, which is most important. Now all we've got to do, <laughs> go off, fill up the trough, baby. Okay, I think while this baby's filling up, why don't we put these awesome pots in place? These are the two pots that I'm going to be planting on either side of the water feature. I love the little motif that's on them here. Now, when you're planting up a container, the most important thing is to make sure that it's got an open drainage hole. First up, what we need to do is get some pebbles and then add a little bit of potting soil. 
This is ordinary potting soil from your local garden centre. Remember folks, please don't use soil from the garden. Don't scrimp on things like this. Rather leave a plant behind if you can't afford the potting soil. It's so important. So I'm going to fill it up just to about a quarter and then I'm going to plant this beauty in it. Now you'll see I've got two different colours here. I want to show you the different options. This plant many of you will recognise as a Diplodenia, that was its old name. And you get a beautiful climber as well, which has a trumpet shaped flower similar to this, just much bigger and voluptuous. Diplodenia is now called Mandevillia, Mandevillia splendens. There are many different varieties and this is the bush variety. So you get the creeping one that can go over pergolas and this guy is the little bush variety. A beautiful specimen, loves growing from the coast up until where you get light frost. Please note light frost. If you're going to get heavy frost, it must be in containers against the wall of a house um, or even on your patio to protect it. Now, this is the ordinary pink and then there's this colour over here. This variety is spectacular. This one's called My Fair Lady. It's a pale, pale blush pink. Absolutely gorgeous. There's another variety as well, which is a deeper, deeper pink. Now, these guys, the beauty about them is that they are fantastic growers. They will never go a day in your garden without having a flower on them. Remember to fertilize them with a potassium rich fertilizer, something like 315 or 515, which is going to encourage lots of flowering. Every now and then you might find coming out of the bush diplodenia, a tendril that kind of starts going off and almost looking like it's trying to circle. That is because this plant is a offshoot or it's a sport of the creeping variety. So every now and then it goes a bit wonky and it'll start sending off a little tendril. All that you've got to do is cut that off, pinch it back to contain the plant and bring it back into shape. If you find that these guys start getting a bit lanky, all you do, grab your pair of secateurs and give them a hard pruning. Do that in the growth season. When is that? That is in late spring, early summer, when they're at their best and they're growing their fosters because then they'll recover much quicker. Last up, before we turn the water feature on, I just want to lay some pebbles around here just to finish it off. I can't wait. Bring it a glass. That's the one. Happy Garth? I'm happy, Tanya. Can't one wait. One thing missing. We just got to turn this baby on and see the magic. Come on, baby. <laughs> Don't you love it? What a feature. <laughs> it looks awesome, Garth. Very, very nice, Tanya. Sweet, you bought this at a garden centre or something. <laughs>